Angular 19 has introduced a new powerful signal-based primitive for fetching data from a backend. It's the new resource API and this is one of the key missing pieces to make the Angular signal story complete. Welcome back to the Angular University channel, I'm Vasco. The reminder of this video that you are about to watch is a new lesson concerning the new resource API extracted from the Modern Angular with Signals course that I'm in the process of updating to Angular 19. If you want to check out the course, have a look at the link in the description. So without further ado, enjoy the content. In this lesson, we're going to talk about a new signal primitive for handling asynchronous requests, the resource API. Now, let me give you a concrete example of how you would use the resource API in your application. I'm going to take this component here, the resource demo component that you can find here as part of our sample application if you head over here to the resource demo screen. So as you can see, it's sort of an auto-completion input box where you can search for lessons, you're going to hit enter or you're just going to type the search and here the results are going to be displayed here in this table. You can reload the lessons and you can reset here the lessons to the empty collection. Let's then see how we can implement this typical example in a declarative way using signals, the resource API, and we are even going to include cancellation. So the typical feature of canceling an ongoing search request if we continue to type in the search box and we issue a new request to the backend server. Let's have a look at the API of our component. We can see that we have here defined a couple of signals. We have the search signal. This emits the search string as the user types it. And we have here a lessons signal that is displaying here the results that we are getting from the backend. Now, our idea here is to make the lessons results depend on the value of the search string, what we want to do that in a declarative way using the resource API. So let's go ahead and let's replace here the definition of lessons and let's use here the resource API, which is useful for handling asynchronous requests. As you know, in the signals world, signals are synchronous by default, but many times in an application, you want to do asynchronous operations as well. And the most typical example is to fetch data from a backend. So how does the resource API work? Well, this is going to take in here uh, a configuration object and also a couple of generic uh, parameters. So the first generic parameter that we need to pass it is going to be the data emitted by this resource. So it's going to be an array of lessons. So this is the result that we are getting from our backend. And the second type uh, argument that we get here is going to define the trigger for the fetching of data from the backend. So it's going to define the source of our resource that is going to trigger a new HTTP request to be issued to the backend. So in our particular case, we are just going to have here a search property, which is going to be of type string. So this is going to be the input that is going to trigger the fetching of a new lessons array from the backend. Now let's go ahead and let's define here a couple of parameters of our resource. So we have here several. We're going to be defining two parameters. We're going to be defining the request and we're going to be defining the loader. So let's talk about each one separately. Let's then talk about here the request property. So this is going to be a function. This function is going to determine when the backend request is going to be made. Now, this function can read here inside its body source signals, such as, for example, the search signal. So let's go ahead and let's have this function return here an object. This object is going to be of this particular type here. So it needs to have a property search and we need to give it a value. So let's access here the search signal and let's invoke it. 
what this request function is essentially saying is that whenever a new value of the source search signal gets emitted, then the request should be reloaded from the backend. Notice that in our particular case, there is only one source signal, the search signal. But if you have a situation where you have multiple source signals that all result in the fetching of the resource from the backend, then you could add here multiple properties to this object. And in that case, you would define a resource with multiple source signals. So now that we understand how the request function works, let's talk about the loader function. So this function is the one that is going to get invoked to fetch the data from the backend. Now, this is typically going to be an async function because fetching data from the backend is an asynchronous operation. So let's add here the async keyword. Now let's go ahead and let's implement the body of the loader function and let's start here with the input argument that we receive here. So here we're going to be receiving a couple of parameters. We are going to destructure them from the argument that we receive here. One is going to be the request. So this is going to be containing this data here. And for now, we are just going to use this property here, the request. Now let's go ahead and let's make our backend call. For that, I'm going to be using simply the fetch API. This is standard browser functionality. It works extremely well and it integrates very well with the resource API. Now, we are going to be calling the following URL in our backend. I'm just going to paste in here the URL and we're going to review it. So we are accessing the root of our API. We are accessing the search lessons endpoint and we are passing here our uh, query that we are getting here from the search signal. We can see that we can access it like this. And I'm passing in here an extra parameter. I'm just hard coding here the course for which we are fetching the lessons. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to await this. And this is going to be the response that we get from our backend. So this is going to be our HTTP response. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to parse it as JSON. So let's define here a JSON constant. And this is going to be the output of response.json. So let's await for the result of this promise. And now let's go ahead and let's return here the output of our loader function. So we are going to access the body of the response and we're going to access the lessons property. And with this, we have implemented our loader function and also our first resource. So let's see what we can do with the resource. If I access it here, we're going to see that lessons is of type resource ref of lesson array. So it's a resource reference and the values emitted by this resource reference are arrays of lessons. So if I access it, I can see that I get here a value signal that I can invoke to get the latest value emitted here by the loader function. I also have is loading. This is a flag that tells me if the data is getting loaded from the backend or not. And we also have here reload. If we want to reload the resource, we can uh, destroy the resource. We can convert it into a read only resource. We can check if it has a value, etc. So let's see how we can use this in our template. I'm going to switch here to the template and here, instead of looping through the lessons, I'm going to loop through lessons.value. This is going to give us an array of lessons. So we have now fixed all compilation errors. Since we are here in the template, let's also add here a loading indicator for when the resource is loading. So let's add here an at if block and inside it, we are going to add here a loading indicator. Let's just use here a material spinner. Let's just add here a CSS class loading and let's add here the condition when to show it. We're going to call here lessons dot is loading. So if the lessons are loading, we are going to show this loading indicator. 
otherwise we're going to show the final result so let's add here an else block and let's move here our results table container inside it so we are now ready to try out our new implementation so let's just summarize how this works we have an input box we are detecting key down events whenever we hit key down we are emitting a new value for the search signal our search signal is the input here in our request function that is going to trigger the loader function to be called the loader function is an async function that fetches the search data from the backend using the fetch api and emits that to the template using here the value signal whenever the resource is loading the data from the backend then is loading is going to cause a material spinner to be shown otherwise we're going to see here the results let's have a look at this in action so if we refresh here the screen we can see the loading indicator and we can see here the first results that's because of the way that our search endpoint works if we don't pass in here any value for the search then it returns the first 10 results but let's go ahead and let's type in here for example y angular signals so if i type here y angular signals we should get here only one result as expected now if you check here the network behavior of this implementation this is not ideal because as i type in here you're going to see that new requests are getting sent to the backend and you can see that the requests all remain pending and they all get executed by the backend this is not ideal what we would like is that if the user has typed here some uh, new search that the previous searches got cancelled we can easily implement that without using rxjs in the following way we are going to be using the built-in native cancellation feature of the fetch api so the fetch api allows to cancel http requests we're going to see how to do that if we check here the documentation we can see that it's all about the notion of an abort signal so let's see how this works essentially what you have to do is to create an abort controller so this is not an angular class this is something that is specific to the fetch api so you create here an abort controller the controller has a property which is coincidentally called also a signal don't confuse this with an angular signal it has absolutely nothing to do with an angular signal it's just that by coincidence it uses the same terminology so if we pass this signal between uh, commas to our http request we are going to be able to abort the request if it's ongoing if somebody calls controller.abort in the abort controller that is linked to the signal now in our particular case we are not going to have to create our own abort controller or trigger its abort method that is going to be done by angular for us in our particular case all we have to do is to receive here in the loader function the abort signal property and from it we just need to pass it here to our fetch call here in the parameters object so here we are going to pass in the property signal and this is going to be the abort signal so again this is not an angular signal it just happens to use the same name this is a construct that is specific to the fetch api and that is used for cancellation purposes now it's as simple as that let's have a look at this in action i'm going to switch again to our application and let's go ahead and let's start start typing he here for example why angular signals and notice that the previous requests are going to start to be cancelled so why angular signals you can see that these resources you can see that all these requests in red have been cancelled before being fully executed and only the last search was really executed by the server and with this we have covered the resource api construct as you can see
This is a very useful feature for fetching data from a backend in a signal-based way without having to write imperative code. Everything is declarative and signal-based.